You know, it was a fun game for the players, very competitive game. Um, and I'd like to see guys compete and have fun in a game like this. And certainly I felt like, uh, especially the way it ended, it was, uh, it ended up that way. Um, my assessment of the spring is, you know, I don't think we're an elite team right now. Uh, I think we're kind of an adequate team. Um, but I don't mean that in a negative way because I think we've come out of spring a lot of years where we don't have an elite team. It's how the team responds through the summer, through fall camp, because we're gonna play an elite team in the first game. And what kind of commitment each guy makes to being an elite player, to affect himself in a positive way, to affect his unit in a positive way. Um, it's gonna determine how we all affect our team in a positive way, which ultimately will lead to uh, what kind of team we really have. So um, I think there was a lot of situations in this game today that are great teaching situations. We get the ball first and two at the one yard, first and one at the one, hit a unforced error with a penalty that puts us on seven. We throw the ball and throw an interception and, and don't score. You know, at the end of the game, the white team had the game won. Uh, get a targeting foul, which was not necessary. And so the other team gets another chance, take advantage of it, kick a field goal, and win the game. So uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from a game management standpoint. It's one of the reasons I like to have games like this, where uh, it's very competitive between the players. The good guys are playing against the good guys. The twos are playing against the twos. Um, I think that a lot of the young players um, did a good job today. Uh, and I think they'll, they'll gain uh, a lot from the experience that they had, uh, whether it was two at quarterback, Jerry Judy at wide receiver, Dylan Moses, uh, Najee Harris, uh, whoever it might have been. Um, I think it was good that we made big plays on some big plays on offense. Uh, I think it's uh, of some concern when you're playing against yourself that uh, at times people were in position to make plays on the ball and didn't make them. Uh, and we got to do a better job on defense with the 50-50 ball or that's going to be an issue with us in the future. So uh, a lot of things to work on, a lot of things to improve on, uh, some things that we that got exposed today that maybe we didn't see the rest of the spring that uh, will be interesting to see how we can get our players to respond to it. So, um, But all in all, I think we had a lot of young players make a lot of progress in the spring. Uh, I think it's a little more difficult for some of the more experienced guys in spring practice to maintain the mindset and the sense of urgency that you'd like for them to, but um, we'll see how they respond to that through the fall. We'll start up front here with Mark. <clears throat> yeah, you mentioned Jerry Judy, but what, what type of spring did he have, and then how far has he come as a player since he first got to campus? Well, he's improved, you know, well, and, you know, had a good day today, and, um, you know, we obviously need some young guys to come through for us at receiver. It's not a position where we have a lot of depth. Uh, Calvin Ridley is, you know, a special player at the position. Uh, Robert Foster had a really good spring, but um, we need some young players like Jerry Judy to continue to grow and develop. And uh, he made uh, significant progress throughout the spring, and I think it culminated in a pretty productive day for him today. Come up here, Michael. Both quarterbacks had over 300 yards passing. I guess what was what were your thoughts there? And uh, with Tua being his first time out there, what were your evaluations of him? Well, Tua's played you know well in all the scrimmages. Um, uh, I, he had two series with the ones where he went three and out. Um, so that's not really what we'd like to see. Uh, but these statistics are very misleading. Uh, first of all, how, how many times did we run the ball? And what were the rushing yards on the rushing play? Uh, and if you want to get the true stats on the passing yards, take away all the sacks uh, from that because those are all the negative plays that we had because we were passing the ball. All right, so there's a lot more balance than what the statistics show uh, because we take the sacks off the rushing yards in college football. Um, so there's really neg no negative plays passing unless you throw an interception. Uh, so, but there was a lot of production I think all of our quarterbacks are better passers than they were a year ago, um, first, second, and third team guys. So I think that was encouraging. Um, but it really is not, I mean, we'll do the stats when we grade the film, 
because we'll say, okay, we ran the ball 27 times and we gained 86 yards. So what, what is that? Three yards a carry? Not, not good enough? All right, maybe the other team gained 152 yards rushing in however many 25 carries. That is good enough. And when you take the sacks off of it, you got no way of knowing what your efficiency is when you ran the ball and really what your efficiency is when you threw it. Because we probably had 10 sacks out there today. 12 total. 12, 12 total. All right, each probably averaging 7 to 10 yards. So now you have 250 yards passing on both teams. So it's, it's a little bit misleading when you just look at that part of it. But uh, as I said before, it was good that we threw the ball with a little more efficiency and we made some explosive plays in the passing game, which I think is very, very important to being successful on offense. Nick, when it's a split squad, like you're talking about, and then watered down schemes on both sides, besides execution, what are you looking for? Where's your eye going? Well, I, I think that um, we're, we're looking for guys that ownership, standard, how does a guy respond when things don't go well? All right, that's the three things that I look at when you're out there in a competitive situation. So ownership means that I can go out there and play my position with consistency and effectiveness and do my job uh, and do it at a high standard of effort and toughness and being a relentless competitor. Right, and then how do I respond when things don't go well? I have a bad play, I drop a ball, I get sacked, uh, I miss a tackle on defense, I get beat over the top. I mean, we're going to have a bad day the rest of the day, or we're going to fight back and do the right thing. So those are probably the three intangible things that I look at most because um, it, it's, it's not a fair assessment based on what you do on defense and what you do on offense. So it comes down to who can execute well uh, and um, you know who can sustain the mindset to be a consistent performer. Going back with Cecil. Coach, um, do you come out of the spring with, with five or six guys who you say this is going to be in some combination our offensive line, or, or is it still further away than that? Well, look, competition is healthy for your team. I, and I know it's really significant to all of you all's job that you know who the first team is and who the second team is, but it really isn't significant to my job at all. What's significant to my job is to have guys keep competing. Uh, iron shot from sharpens iron, so good guys competing against good guys, making each other better, so that we get more guys that can play winning football. That's what's important to me. Uh, and, you know, right now, I might say we probably have four offensive linemen. I'm not going to say who could play winning football. We probably have another four that have the potential to play winning football uh, that may not be where they need to be. Um, we're going to play the best five guys to give us the best chance uh, doing the things that I just talked about. Ownership can do their job and um, has a high standard of how they compete and um, can sustain when things don't go their way and um, self-correct what they have to do to play the next play. So um, I, I can't. <coughs> I mean, football is a developmental game. So players need the opportunity to develop before we get to the results. <coughs> Which you all just want results. I mean, there, there is no process. Right? There is no discipline to execute. I mean, there's none of those things. It's just tell me, tell me who's going to be there. So I can create an expectation for them and then kill them when they don't live up to it. I, I get it. I mean, I, I, I understand. But so, no, do we have five starters etched in stone? No. Do we have starters etched in stone at every position? No. Uh, there's competition at positions, and if somebody's a better player can give us a better chance to win, we're going to play the guy. And we've always done that. And I think we owe the players on our team um, the, to play the best players. <clears throat> You're able to establish some success with the long passing, deep passing early on. What is your assessment of that, and what did you see from that? Well, what I saw is we're playing against each other, so every time we completed one, I was happy for the guy that completed it, and I was saying, why did the defensive guy let him complete it? 
All right, so I guess to answer your question, I have to say, since we were playing against each other, I had mixed emotions. <laughs> okay. Go to Alex. Is that fair? Yeah. I wanted to ask you what you saw from Najee, his progression this spring, and is he one of those kind of those talents that you kind of have to find a role at some point for him just to get him on the field? Well, look. You know, we, we've got some good young players. All of them are guys that I think Brian Robinson had a really good spring. I think Najee made a lot of progress this spring. Um, you know, we've got Jacobs, we've got Damian Harris, we've got Bo who didn't play today. Uh, I think DJ Emmons showed last year who didn't play today that he can do some things. So uh, I think all these guys, um, a lot of competition. Uh, I think it'll make them all better. Uh, and I think that um, it's good.